Enoch Burke was dismissed on Friday from his employment as a secondary school teacher with Wilson's Hospital. Mr Burke can appeal that decision within 10 days of the decision to terminate. In the circumstances of a stage 4 sanction, and it is a stage 4 sanction dismissal, he's entitled to an independent panel to review the uh, disciplinary process and review any grounds that he has to set aside the proposed decision by the Board of Management to terminate his employment. This dispute, as you know, has generated a great deal of publicity and it has made a huge amount of media headlines, frequent visits to the High Court. Those appearances in the High Court are not finalised yet, not by a long shot. In the coming week, for example, the High Court is to give a decision in relation to the school's application for a sequestration order in, in respect of Mr Burke's assets. Mr Burke's application then for an order that the whole disciplinary process embarked upon by the school has infringed his constitutional rights to natural justice, fair procedures, freedom of expression, freedom in respect of his religious rights has yet to be heard by the High Court in a full hearing. Let's park those High Court actions though, those applications for injunctions and so forth for the moment and let's just take a look at some employment law issues which have arisen in this case. There has been a great deal of commentary online, social media and so forth on my YouTube channel for example, on my Facebook page, Facebook pages and obviously on Twitter generally, a huge amount of comment and most of the comment quite frankly is misconceived and is plain wrong but much of it I suppose is right but bottom line is I think there is some employment law issues to look at here just for the sake of clarity and to throw a bit of light as opposed to heat on the situation. So in general terms, what I'm proposing to do here is look at some general employment law lessons that we can learn from this affair, this Enoch Burke dismissal, this Enoch Burke disciplinary process. Firstly, let's take a look at a school's rights and obligations. A school is entitled to determine its ethos and implement policies and procedures in the school that are lawful and in keeping with the school's ethos. The ethos will normally come or will come from the school's patron. In a Catholic school, for example, that would come from uh, the bishop. Once a board of management does this, it's entitled to expect that teachers SNAs and other staff will follow reasonable direction from the board and the principal who is responsible for the day-to-day -day running of the school. School also has obligations in respect of health and safety and has rights and obligations to maintain order in the school and workplace and exercise a duty of care to pupils and staff. The school also has the right to investigate and discipline employees when necessary and to ensure dignity and respect for all employees and pupils and the right to deliver an education to the pupils of the school. Pupils have a right, obviously, to an education. and This is a constitutional right and they also have the right to the support and assistance of the school and its staff. Teachers' rights, then, on the other hand, teachers and other staff in any school just like in any workplace, have rights arising from the contract of employment, from statute law and from the constitution, Bunrock Nehiran, to name the most important sources of an employee's rights. But legal and constitutional rights are not absolute. They often come into conflict with the rights of others. And the court then has to weigh up the conflicting rights and make a determination in any given conflict, any given dispute. Anyone with a passing interest in the constitution, Bunrock Nehiran, will know that the personal rights, for example, all personal rights are qualified. For example, the right to freedom of expression is, quote, subject to public order and morality. Rights in respect of property, property are subject to the state, may, as occasion requires, delimit by law the exercise of the said rights 
with a view to reconciling their exercise with the exigencies of the common good. Rights to form associations and unions are subject to the right of citizens to form unions and associations. Laws, however, may be enacted for the regulation and control in the public interest of the exercise of the foregoing right. There are primary school teachers who have strong religious beliefs. There are also agnostic and atheist primary school teachers who help prepare their pupils for First Holy Communion and Confirmation because that is the job that they signed up for. They can still hold their beliefs or they can choose not to have any religious beliefs or any beliefs at all. But their contract obliges them to follow reasonable directions of the employer and make themselves amenable to disciplinary procedures. This is a fundamental of the employment relationship generally and would be applicable in any workplace in the country. Disciplinary procedures then in the education system in Ireland. All schools in the state have a great deal of assistance with respect to procedures and policies in the workplace from the Department of Education. The Department of Education provides policies and procedures to schools to ensure discipline, dignity at work, discrimination, bullying, grievances and so on are dealt with in accordance with the law and in accordance with best practice. You'll also have employee handbooks and contracts of employment in individual schools. Any employee in a school who has a complaint or issue to raise would be expected to follow the grievance procedures in the workplace in the first instance. They can then also bring that complaint to the Workplace Relations Commission if they're not satisfied with the outcome of the internal process. The department also issues circular letters, lots of them to boards of management, dealing with all kinds of things that might arise in a school on a regular basis. Many schools will also have a body to which they pay an annual subscription fee, depending on how many pupils in the school and to whom they can turn for further assistance when issues or problems arise. In the primary sector, for example, you'll have the Catholic Primary Schools Management Association and there are similar bodies in the secondary sector. The CPSMA advise boards of management of primary schools. The teaching professions also have a large, strong, powerful Unions such as the TUI, INTO, ASTI, etc., representing teachers and other staff working in schools. And there is a long, well established tradition in the education sector of representation for employees, policies and procedures to reflect changes in employment law, and so on. That's not to say that in any individual case mistakes cannot be made or one party or or the other may be at fault and compound matters by digging in. But when an employee comes to me for legal advice and I learn that they are an employee in the education sector, I immediately know that the environment in which they work is not like a small employment scenario in the private sector. I know that the employee is coming from a fairly well organised, structured sector of the employment community and the likelihood of the employee having a justiciable claim on the basis of the absence of procedures or policies is much less than an employee coming from a small private sector employment, such as a small one-man band band outside Enfield, you know, carrying on a small business, manufacturing gates or whatever. The relevant circular letter to deal with the disciplinary procedure for primary and secondary schools is circular letter 0049 of 2018. And you can take a look at that if you like on my website employmentrightsireland.com and you can have a look at the various stages in the disciplinary procedure and you can see then as well stage 5 is the appeal process and it sets out how the appeal will be conducted. In conclusion, when you dispel a lot of the heat and hot air around this Enoch Burke dispute, you realise that at its heart, in my view, it's an employment dispute that's gone wrong. And for that reason, it's worth our while, I think, reminding ourselves about certain fundamental principles of employment law, which I've hoped to do, or which I've set out to do in this video. If in any legal dispute, there are competing rights. 
the rights on each side are not unconditional or absolute. And this case isn't any different. Hope you find this video useful, informative, etc. I would ask you to give it a thumbs up down below if you do. And uh, you may be interested in checking out my website, employmentrightsireland.com. And the most recent post I've done has the circular letter for the disciplinary procedures to be carried out in the primary and secondary school sectors in respect of the uh, suspension and disciplining of both school teachers and principals. Thanks a lot.